So Elon Musk just appeared on the Joe Rogan experience. And Joe Rogan, in reposting this on X, had this to say. The great and powerful Elon Musk. If it wasn't for him, we'd be fine. Everything's fine. He makes what I think is the most compelling case for Trump you'll hear. And I agree with him every step of the way. For the record, yes, that's an endorsement of Trump. Enjoy the podcast. So a big moment here, Joe Rogan previously trying to pretend as if he doesn't have his political preferences and keeping them fairly under wraps, at least not explicitly endorsing candidates. But here we are. The moment has come after this conversation, which Joe describes to his audience as the most compelling case for Trump you'll hear. Joe Rogan comes out of the Trump closet and formally endorses Donald Trump for president in 2024. We'll get to some highlights from the podcast shortly. Given the US presidential election, as I record this, is currently underway. Just quickly first, I wanted to share this. Wow, I have some more big news, Megan. I'm just getting this right now. So somebody that's very, very respected uh, asked me to do his show two weeks ago, and I said, why not? And to me, it's very big because he's uh, the biggest there is, I guess, in that world by far. Somebody said the biggest beyond anybody in a long time. And his name is Joe Rogan, and he's never done this before. And it just came over the wires that Joe Rogan just endorsed me. Is that right? Thank you, Joe. That's so nice. And he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. So. And he tends to be a little bit more liberal than some of the people in this room. No, I had a lot, a lot of fun, and he was amazing. And uh, he was, uh, it was a three-hour interview. In fact, I was two hours late for a rally that we had. I had explained that a little bit. And it was cold out that night. We flew, and I, but we had to make it. We were two, more than two hours late, and they understood. I said, you know, I, I just was interviewed by a very interesting guy, and he just kept going on. They called it a long-form and it could have gone a lot longer, but he was great. And uh, he's not a person that does endorsements, but he did an endorsement. So I just want to thank Joe Rogan. That's fantastic. A big moment. Now, the reason for bringing this up is to ask the question. Had Elon Musk not had this conversation with Joe Rogan and, in Joe's own words, made the most compelling case he's heard for Trump, would Joe Rogan have formally endorsed Donald Trump for president? Personally, I think the answer is absolutely fucking lutely not no chance zero. Safe to say Elon Musk may in fact be the world's most influential person as I currently record this. And should Trump win the election, meaning that in essence America wants him leading the country on average and Musk took a huge personal risk in endorsing him strongly, being all in on Trump, do you think it's possible the law of reciprocation may apply to some people who are very thankful that Orange Man Bad was elected president and believe that Elon had a bit of a role and are looking at purchasing a new vehicle in the future and Think, hang on a minute, doesn't Elon have something to do with vehicles? Let me check out one of those Teslas. You've got to give credit to Elon Musk for having the fucking balls to take a massive personal risk and formally endorse Trump. Remember, courage is contagious. How many people will continue to remain in the Trump closet had Musk not given an example of how to find and use one's testicles? Now, I can't actually play any highlights from the podcast, so I'll have to describe them to you. The reason, of course, extreme copyright issues. If I even try this stuff, will get blocked and you won't be able to watch today's video. But it opened with a conversation about Musk describing his current ranking within the global top 20 in Diablo 4. And fact check, if I scroll down on the list right now, this is the pit leaderboard. If you're not a nerd, don't worry. Let's see, where is Elon Musk currently ranked? Number 19. Congratulations, Elon. You fuck. Yeah, in case you guys don't know the background here, you might notice a familiar name. Seven positions behind Musk. This is extremely embarrassing for me on a personal level. The guy's got like 17 jobs, 400 children. And he's still better at me than Diablo 4. Embarrassing, although I knew this was coming. I actually posted a while ago about Musk being in the top 30. He happened to notice that I was ahead of him at that time, and I knew at that point I was fucked. Soon after, the guy equals my time, and now a five-second margin, seven places. I have officially, by the way, retired from the pits, so I'm not going to be catching up. Now, the point I bring this up for is just to emphasize the fact that no matter what Elon is doing, you do not want to bet against the guy. Of note, by the way, there's only one other person from the United States in the top 20. The rest is predominantly China and one miraculous Australian. And to be clear, Musk's latest all-in bet is on Trump for president. Now, one other thing of note during this podcast, Joe Rogan actually asked if there was a chance Tesla would ever make an iPhone-like competitor, a smartphone, and Musk pointing out that 
well, technically, Tesla has the goods and in theory could do it. He really, really doesn't want to, so no. But worst case scenario, if there's extreme suppression of apps, information and so on through the gatekeepers, Apple, it is possible, but must saying that Tesla are entirely focused on autonomy, robotics and energy. And I'm sure a lot of people watching can't wait until this erection is over. Definitely the biggest of my lifetime. Morning, afternoon, evening, there's only one thing on my mind. And I'll share my prediction soon, at the risk of great embarrassment. But first, Trump has some thoughts, not necessarily about Elon Musk, but someone closely related. But Elon is a total pro, and I saw his mother, the most elegant woman. I said, Elon, she produced you. Well, she produced one hell of a smart guy, but I'm saying, did you see his mother with her beautiful white hair? She looked like total royalty. And she said she went, I think, to New York, and uh, she pulls out identification. No, I don't need that, ma'am. Oh, of course you do. It's my, I, she wanted to give it. They didn't want it. And she said, very interesting. She was interviewed just yesterday. A very smart woman produced a lot of smart kids too. Not just Elon, a lot of smart kids. And she was amazed. She left there. They didn't want any information. They didn't want her ID. They didn't want identification. And she said, you know, that's a strange thing. I've been in many countries and they always want your identification. So look, we have a country with a massive headache and it would go a lot longer than headache. It would be a much stronger word than the word headache. And we have to solve this problem because we have a mess on our hands. Now, I know a lot of people watching are sick of this talk about the US presidential election, but most of you own Tesla stock and it's highly relevant. As Musk has pointed out, if Kamala Harris wins, he's fucked. And don't take my word for it. I'm not twisting things or distorting reality or exaggerating what Musk said. The actual guy himself replied to this very video. Yeah, major problem. Now, my prediction, if you happen to be a visual person, you can see on screen now. I do anticipate a massive, overwhelming win for Donald J. Trump. So here it is, my final election prediction. And again, a Trump win is the best possible scenario for Tesla. Kamala Harris, the worst. My prediction, Trump wins by a landslide, wins the popular vote, wins all swing states, and it is a crushing, overwhelming victory. Keeping in mind that in 2020, I was relatively confident Trump was going to win. And in 2016, I didn't think he'd win, but then again, I didn't really know what the fuck I was talking about. I was busy working 80, 100 hour weeks, building a finance business, living in Australia and paying very little attention. It's actually Trump winning in 2016 that made me start looking going, wait, what? How the fuck? I need to understand what happened. So how did I draw this conclusion, which will make me one from three, if I'm correct? And the answer was by listening to thousands of voters explain their thinking and reasoning. What I observed, number one, fed up Democrats are voting for Trump for the first time, even those who really dislike him. And the opposite is not happening. In other words, no ex-Trump voters are switching to Kamala. And this alone will ensure a Trump victory. Number two, many ex-Democrats have become independents due to woke insanity, invasion through the southern border, and the current economy. Number three, independents who are not brain dead and or brainwashed are voting for Trump. And this includes many who preferred DeSantis, RFK, Vivek, and so on. On screen now, if you know, you know, there are many such cases. By the way, let me know in the comments below if you saw this conversation and what you guys thought. In the end, it was inevitable. Four, people who sit out elections are so fed up with the last roughly four years that they're voting Trump as their first ever vote cast for president. Five, which I happen to label four as well, 99% of the people voting for Kamala are either racists who are voting because of her skin color, sexists who are voting because she has a vag, women who definitely had a strong father figure in the home who want to abort one night stands, male feminists trying to get laid by showing what an ally they are for women, compromised celebrities or NPCs who think Trump is a threat to democracy. These people may be incredibly stupid, but they are a very small slice of the overall population. Five, 95% of Democrats strongly disagree with letting illegal immigrants flood into the US unvetted at the expense of the US taxpayer. Strongly disagree with men in women's sports and locker rooms. Strongly disagree with mutilating and sterilizing children. And finally, many people who previously thought Trump was a devil have dug deeper after noticing the media lied once about him, only to discover everything they were programmed to believe about Trump was a lie, and that he actually cares about all American citizens and wants what is best for the country. And I've noticed this playing out on this channel. Over the last few years, I've had some positive things to say about Trump. I've been constantly trolling. The people have been programmed by the media by calling him Orange Man Bad to insinuate the programming that Orange Man Bad, which is not the reality. And I've seen people flipping out unsubscribe, fuck you, you don't know what you're talking about, you're from Australia, fuck you, he's a fascist, he's not. Just losing their minds. 
You'll still see many of them today, by the way. Watch the comments and read. Some people that are just so absolutely gone, especially for some strange reason, a lot of people in particular, like Europe, Germany, especially. But I've also noticed a lot of people coming around, some more slowly than others. So how did I hear the opinions of literally thousands of voters? The answer is that I watched at two, two and a half speed, even three times speed in some cases, every single street interview that I could find in every city, town and state, and listened to people explain their thinking and reasoning. Now, to be clear, the vast majority of these live street interviews unedited. So isn't it, it's not skewed responses, right? Somebody goes live and for two hours, by the way, Nick Shirley, one such example, many others, and asks people on the street their thoughts, who they're voting for and why. It's quite telling. And the key takeaway is that voter turnout will be a record. And literally 99.9% of the people who have switched parties are voting for Trump. It's one-way traffic. They're fed up. And for what it's worth, this outcome, a Trump landslide victory, has been my expectation for a few months as I've been watching the street interviews for months. But I continued consuming content, opinions, and was entirely willing to change my mind. But I've seen nothing to cause me to change my mind. Hence this prediction. My final prediction, Trump wins by a landslide and sweeps all swing states. The best possible outcome for Tesla. With, of course, one very slight caveat on screen now, which would have instantly resulted in me being banned from YouTube had I suggested anything even slightly like this a little over three and a half years ago. To put it succinctly, you know zero people who voted for Trump in 2016 and or 2020 who are voting Kamala in 2024. They don't exist, except, of course, compromised politicians and compromised celebrities and Diddy party attendees. But forget that. People who aren't compromised. There's none who previously voted for Trump who are now voting Kamala. Zero. You do know at least one person who voted Hillary or Biden in 2016 or 2020 who's voting Trump in 2024. E.g. it's totally one-way traffic. And people are so fed up. Record turnout from voters is inevitable. Do the math. And apparently Elon Bad had something to say as well. By the way, you do realise Elon's going to become public enemy number one after this election, regardless of the outcome. Because this is going to be Trump's either final campaign and or final term. They don't have to worry about him. Elon's currently public enemy number two from the hate machine on the left. After the outcome of this election is known, he becomes public enemy number one. Now, he quoted what I'd said here and wrote this. Last election, I didn't know a single independent or swing voter who was voting for Trump. This time, I don't know anyone who isn't. And one person after another has confided in me that they're voting for Trump but they're afraid to say so publicly because it will affect their friends slash jobs slash customers. Now, look, I can understand this. It's called being a fucking pussy. It'd be great to see more courage and less cowardice, but it is what it is. Musk's conclusion. A crushing defeat is coming for the oppressive big government machine represented by the Kamala puppet. And amazingly, I agree. As I said, this is the best possible outcome for Tesla. However, if some late mail arrives and Kamala ends up as the next president, all bets are off. Want more content? Early access, a bunch of perks, click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pin comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. This viewer after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more. Don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect, but even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.